Welcome to Life Mastery for Women, where I help you decode the struggles in your life in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality with mind mastery, emotional management, and meditation. Welcome to today's podcast. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you wise beyond your years. If you are not wise beyond your years, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So the title of today's episode is With Age Comes Wisdom, All Lies. Now, why do I believe that that is a lie? Well, long time ago, I remember hearing the quote, with age comes wisdom, and I'm like, with age comes wisdom. I'm like, okay, so as I get older, I'll get wiser. <laughs> and then somewhere in my 20s, mid-20s, I'm like, how come I'm not getting any smarter, <laughs> but I'm getting older? What do I got to do? What has to change? I think I have to take the reins by this because it isn't just simple year after year of living on the planet that you become smart. Now, you might know more things, but we all know that knowing more things does not equate to true wisdom. Now, what is your definition of wisdom? Because it might be different than mine. My definition of wisdom is a little bit deeper than just smart. We can all be smart on different tangible things, accounting, doctors, nurses, teachers, and be an expert in a certain area that we choose, right? Wisdom to me is about internal growth and expansion. It is about knowing what you're after, like in the overall part of your life, not, not necessarily, well, I'm going to get a degree or I'm going to uh, build this business or I'm going to raise kids or I'm get this job, whatever. It is about the deeper meaning of life to you. That deeper meaning of what is it that you're after? What emotional sensation do you want to create in your life? And how do you want to create it? What are some of the things that you want to do? But it's about personal development. It's about developing yourself as a person, as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, as a sister, a daughter, whatever. But it's about developing yourself as a person. So when you think of like, you go up the mountain to go talk to the sage, you can pretty much ask him any question, but I will tell you what he's not going to answer for you are how do I become better at being an accountant? He doesn't care. Go to school. I don't know. Learn it from an expert, right? Go somewhere, go to some college or some vocational school and learn from the experts on how to do that specific task to the best of your ability. But what I, the sage, wants to teach you is how to be a better person how to feel better inside, how to overcome some of the monkey mind and become more in tune with your emotions so you can kind of live life and feel good. That, to me, is inner wisdom. So when I heard that age, with age comes wisdom, I'm thinking, ah, oh, this is pretty exciting. <laughs> and then I had these relationships that were really stupid <laughs> and really sucky and not trustworthy and not supportive and, and on and on it goes, right? Okay, well, this is no, why am I not getting wiser? Well, because I think it takes three things to really start developing yourself wisdom. I, it takes more than that, but these are the three that are, that are showing up for me in this moment. One is learning, being able to take information in, and then the next is growth and being able to take that information and make some significant changes that then allow you to grow in your capacity. And then the last is application, is to continue to apply those changes in your life so things just become automatic. So first you have to be open to learning new things. I bet a lot of you know people in your life that are older that you're like, oh my God, like you have no idea what you're doing in your life, do you? You're angry, you complain, you're whining, you're whatever. I don't wanna be around you, but yet you're older, you should be wiser, right? <laughs> and they're just not. And then there's probably people in your life that are younger, maybe late teens, maybe even younger, where you're like, you are wise beyond your years. Now what's the difference? Look at the difference of how they take new information in, how they, how they take change. How do we look at change and, 
and respond to it. When things have to change, when there's a pandemic and all of a sudden the world is shutting down where we can't fly, we can't go anywhere, we can't go into stores, we need to be at home, you, you have to be tested, there's this deadly disease that's running rampant through the, through the globe, what are we going to do? And people start freaking out. They start freaking out. I mean, and I can say with due cause, like things were happening, right? People were dying. People were, were like, it was pretty scary there for a while. But with great wisdom comes a responsibility. And in that responsibility, it is about you adjusting to those things that change us, to those things that are happening around us. It is about us adapting to change. It's about us adapting to people, adapting to different things that are happening within our lives, and then making those adjustments. So the world shifts and changes, something happens, whether it's an immediate in your life or it's globally, something happens. And how do you adjust to it? Do you complain about it? Do you call everybody and their brother and light up their phone? Do you gossip about it? Do you, what do you do? And, and do this along with me. Sometimes when change comes to me, I'm just like, oh my God, it depends on the change, <laughs> especially if it's not good change. And I get emotional. That's my first kind of a knee jerk reaction. And it's tough. Like I have to catch it ahead of time and it can be really tough. I totally get that. And if that's you, I totally understand. But then what happens after that? Do you like, okay, okay, just relax. Let's just let it sit for a second. Let's not jump around like a lunatic. Let's just see what happens. Let's just let it unfold. Let me just let it, let it uh, marinate for a second and see what changes. So what do you do? Do you knee jerk reaction and it throws you off kilter? And you stay in that knee jerk reaction and you get upset and you continue to go and go and go and complain about it? Or do you do something different? So when something like that happens, there's a thing to learn. There's something that shows up in your life that you need to learn. Do you have a hard time managing your money, let's say, and has it been many, many, many years and you're still complaining about the economy how, or getting mad about at your boss? Like, how can I be working for this company and they, I haven't gotten a raise in five years? Or how come when I ask for a promotion, he says no every single time? So when we're looking at those things and you're seeing that you are complaining and, and blaming the outside world, that is a time for something to shift. Because the outside world is a reflection of you, right? The outside world is something that you're creating that experience. So when I say if you've been struggling with finances for a long time, there's something there to learn. You have to learn how to manage your money. You have to learn how to ask for a promotion. Maybe you need to shift and change and find something that you really do enjoy. Maybe it's gonna be something completely different that allows you to grow in a way that you can go out on your own and build a six-figure business and not have a ceiling like jobs create. But either way, there's something for you to, to, to learn. Now, the next question is, are you open to learning new things? And then the next, the next bullet point is growth. Not only are you willing to learn new things, but are you willing to change? Are you willing to expand? Have you ever read a book that is like all this new information, you get kind of excited, you're like, oh yeah, okay, so it isn't about the outside world, it's about me managing my income. It's about me making do with what money is coming in. It's about me being in control of my money versus my money controlling me. That's kind of exciting. But then you read this book and you're like, wow, like that's really overwhelming. That's a lot to consider. That's you expanding, pushing those outer boundaries that is your energy, pushing to the limits that say something needs to change. And when you get there, then it's, you have to kind of go easy because you're shifting and changing. So think of, think of like um, a cup of water. It can only hold so much. You pour water into it, it's just a little bit, and then it overflows, right? Well, what if you get a bucket of water now you take what's in that cup and you pour it into the bucket and see how much more room you have for growth. Now you take that bucket and you pour it into a swimming pool. Now look at how much more room there is for growth. That's your energy capacity. That is you taking in new information and pushing those boundaries and growing a little bit. 
That's why when you take a four-year-old and you're teaching him how to tie his shoes, he completely melts down on the kitchen floor because it's not a skill that he has. How many skills do four-year-olds have, the average four-year-old? Not very many, 20. Maybe they can brush their teeth, they can eat, they can, maybe they can get dressed, you know, but they can't drive a car. They can't balance a checkbook. They can't start a fire. They can't, maybe, maybe they could climb a tree, but I doubt it. They can't mow your lawn, right? Now look at you, however old you are, 40s, 50s, 60s, 33, how many skills do you have? So with that growth came uh, capacity shifts and expansion. And it's a natural state of things. So as you are born, you don't know very much. You can't do very many things on your own. You need lots of help and support. You can't eat on your own. You can't use the bathroom. You can't walk, right? The only thing you can do on your own is blink, cry, and poop your pants. I mean, there's, you, don't have, you, don't have many, you don't have many skills at all, right? So I think that as you start to grow and you're developing, those natural developmental stages happen naturally. You just now want to learn how to walk. Then you want to learn how to write and read. Then you want to learn how to drive a car. You, it happens naturally until you reach whatever age where sometimes that learning stops. Sometimes you're 16 and you're like, I know everything, right? And then you go to college and you're like, oh my God, there's like, I know nothing. I don't even know where the, where the cafeteria is, right? Now you're 25, you've got your career, you're in a job. That's typically, if you go to college, that's typically when the learning stops. And then that's where we're supposed to start getting wiser, right? We're supposed to start learning and shifting and changing, and we're not doing that. But it is in that constant willingness to grow and change and push at your boundaries that allows you to truly gain wisdom. And then from there, it is about the application, continuously applying that new knowledge. You can't just go to the gym one time and work out and expect to lose 60 pounds. It's got to be the willingness to change and grow. You learn something new, and now it's about the momentum. It's the continuation until it becomes a habit. Now I just work out because it's a natural part of my routine. I brush my teeth twice a day because it's a natural part of my routine. But when I was seven, I didn't want to brush my teeth twice a day, right? I didn't take a shower every day when I was seven. I just wanted to play. I wanted to go outside. I wanted to climb things, right? And so let's, now let's, let's take a step further. What is your definition of wisdom? How do you define it? What does it mean for you? What does wisdom mean? It's different than just being smart. It's different than just having a skill set on something, right? It's about personal development and personal growth. It's about expansion. It's about expanding in yourself to then move towards the things that you want. It's that internal shift that happens. And it's in that internal shift that allows us to truly find happiness. Because if you spend your whole life blaming the economy, the government, your parents, your husband or wife, your job, your boss, you're gonna have a really unhappy life. Eventually, we go, okay, I can't control everything outside of me, but I can control myself. What do I have to do? I have to change something, I have to shift something. And in that changing and shifting comes wisdom. If you liked this episode and you look forward to future episodes and are really looking for a community to help support you with implementing the tools that we're talking about in this podcast, please consider joining our online sister community called Lady Rising on Facebook, where we focus on that spiritual support and connection, just like in today's episode. I hope you'll join us. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, and tell me you came in through the podcast.